Welcome to somewhere just outside Paris where we're having a look at the brand new Peugeot E 5008. Yes, that's right. The seven seater 5008 is now fully electric. And if you just saw the E 3008 on the channel a couple of weeks ago, this is not just a stretched version. I can assure you. Uh, we'll look now at the parts that are similar. So the nose of the car still very similar. We have 5008 lettering over the front. The GT version gets the same grille that's matching the color of the car on the exterior. And if you come with me this way, uh, I'll show you where the rest of the car starts to change. So basically from the B pillar onwards, which if you're not au fait with the technical lingo of the cars, is, is this part. This is a B pillar. So up to here, it's very much a 3008, but then it starts to get much bigger. It's 15 centimeters longer than the last version of the car and it will comfortably fit seven people. They've also made some adjustments to some of the seats from the rails that the seats run along. So I'll show you, will you manage to fit maybe teenagers in the back of the car and how the boot is quite versatile. We'll check it all out here on Knobby on Cars. You're welcome to this video, the new E5008. So before we get into the inside of the car, these covers that are still at the bottom of the doors, they essentially keep your trousers, your white jeans, whatever you need clean, clean from the outside elements. So that's handy to have. Checking out the back of the car then, there's a lot going on when it comes to the boot space and things that will make life easier for you as a parent or as someone, as Peugeot have described, uh, as empty nesters. It's quite unusual that they're pitching this car potentially at empty nesters, which I thought was a little bit strange today because surely they'd be using smaller cars, not bigger cars. Peugeot have even given us some, here's something I made earlier, suitcases to demonstrate that even with the third row of seats, you still get a reasonable boot. Uh, I often like to say you get a week shopping in here don't know if that's quite the case with all the seats, but you can individually drop these down. And let me just, you stay there and I'll grab something that has never been provided before. So even for that reason, I don't play golf, but can you fit some golf clubs in the back if this is primarily the car for, I don't want to be sexist, but the wife and the kids during the week, but can you still use it the weekend? Could you be a one car family and could you cycle to work? There is a question. Other cool feature in the E5008, this shelf can now come out, but if you want somewhere to put the parcel shelf, because you're using the extra row of seats, it can fit down here. Not a lot of cars do that, believe it or not. In the versions of the car that aren't dual motor, you'll get a tray down here, which stores your type two cables. So they're tucked completely out of sight, out of mind, because there's no frunk in this car. So you have that as an option if you want to keep the cables uh, safely and securely tucked away. And the boot on GT versions is electronic. Quite like the E3008 then across the back, we have a white burr and E5008 is the lettering. There will be a hybrid and a PHEV hybrid version of this car as well. No diesel. Let's talk about charging for a second. And there's two different battery sizes. The larger battery claiming a range of up to 660 kilometers. That's WLTP. It's gonna be in really ideal world, perhaps clinical conditions, but that's the claim nonetheless. 22 kilowatt onboard charger is an optional extra, but you do get 11 as standard. And if you use the fastest charging on DC, you'll get from 20 to 80% in 30 minutes. Peugeot say that's really important. Comfort and how far will it get me? That's the feedback they get from customers. Uh, this charging door has got a lot of attention because it's absolutely huge. Again, they say this is because it has to facilitate petrol models, different size handles. It needs to be huge. That said, the actual charging port is quite small, so I still wonder why the door has to be so big. There's a little bit of graphite going on here with three grooves, part of the lion claw over this corner of the car. And I do wonder, the last version we had on the channel of the E3008 was that lovely blue. Does this brighter white show up the lines a bit more? Not those lines, the actual lines. Battery manufacturer will take place in France but there's a little bit of a caveat with that. So there's a sister company of BYD, who Stellantis, who own Peugeot, have been using 
to make sure there's enough production to get this car on the road. When their new ACC joint venture plant is fully operational, it'll probably be maybe 2025 until that's fully at 100% capacity, all batteries will then be made in France. Now, the battery from BYD is not LFP, it's not a blade battery, and the battery that ACC will make for this car will be more energy dense. So in theory, it'll also be a little bit thicker into how it sits into the platform of the car. In theory, that battery should be more efficient. They claim about 14 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Now, the drag coefficient of the car is 0.29. It's a big bus, it's 2.3 ton minimum. If it can achieve that type of fuel economy, that's really impressive. Just to demonstrate to you a couple of things. So first of all, when you're getting in the back, this whole seat lifts like that. There's five different adjustable angles on this seat, which you can adjust with, with the handle, depending again on how much space you need in the back of the car. And then that will go fully flat if you don't need the full uh, five seats in the back. A couple of things. First of all, this doesn't have uh, an optional glass roof. If it does, it comes back about as far as here. You still have a bit of head space. You know, this is in theory for smaller kids up to teenagers. It's not primarily meant for adults. That said, they've done their best to try and accommodate larger humans. So instead of having four rails, for example, on the floor, they've got two. And the way this uh, seat just kind of closes back, it kind of lifts like, if you've ever been in a multi-person van, it lifts quite like that. Now, you can just about squeeze your feet under the seats. You can also adjust this middle row, which I'll show you in a second. So if you do need more leg space, but fully back, yeah, you're not gonna fit an adult, but you will get a kid. Um, as I look around, there's no USB-C, there's no air as to speak. There is a 12 volt charger, uh, little windows here, which will help with light. And one of the seat belts is in the roof of the car. So it is snug, uh, not as big as the EV9, but it's not as big a car as the EV9. Middle row in the 5008. Couple of changes. Uh, first of all, no eyes affixed seat in the middle. That was a three eyes affixed setup in the previous version of the car. But you can drop this down on an individual basis so you can have the two outer seats in use if you don't need them. And you do get an armrest in certain versions. Um, have slightly different configurations on the armrest. Angle of that is a, it's down a little bit low. Climate control on the back for these rear passengers as well as USB-A charging ports. And this is the bench. So this individual seat moves by itself and the outer two away from me also move. So that's how you give your third row a bit more leg room if they need it. There's still cutouts on the back of the seats. So actually they've done as much as they can to squeeze space. Remember, this is not a five meter long SUV. So to get the interior space of the car working what they have, uh, footprint wise, I think is quite impressive. GT versions will get blinds to keep the sun rays out of the little eyes in the back and the ambient lighting is quite nice how it lights up. Um, so good use of materials. Again, quite similar, uh, familiar feeling to the textures that we've seen in the previous version of the car. Glass roof would definitely add light. And if you get it, unlike a huge amount of EVs, the front part of the sunroof does actually open. Front of the E5008 is very similar to the new 3008 that we had on the channel. You now have 10 different widgets here that you can have shortcuts that work for you. You've got this 21 inch floating screen. I think it works better. There was a lot of um, criticism of the steering wheel. Sometimes it would block the view of the instruments. It seems to work better with this. I never personally had an issue with it. I managed to be able to see, but depending on how tall you are. Same haptic style buttons. You hover over them and they know you're there, but they won't change anything until you physically press it. Gear selector is on the dashboard that used to be down here, if you remember. Uh, we still have this storage part that was uh, in the new E3008 as well. A uh, couple of uh, options for charging USB A and C. I kind of like that they're giving you both options actually. Uh, two cup holders, reasonable size. Got armrest down here, which can hide things like the keys. And you've got little trays and bits that you can take out. Uh, depending on, again, seat options that you have, you've got AGR seats, which are really good for people with uh, back complaints and back issues. The bolsters can be deflated and inflated, depending on if you've gone mad on the roses at Christmas or not. Actually, I don't want to say roses, because roses have gone to the dogs. Um, 
celebrations. Anyway, if you've been celebrating too much with the celebrations, you can let the seats in and out, which is kind of handy. Um, as I mentioned in the other video, the inside was such an upgrade, as well as the outside uh, for Peugeot. It's not a hard act to follow, but it's, it's not an extreme, as an extreme change, because the last time it was like, wow. So this is still wow, it's just wow on the last version, whereas before it was like polar opposites in the difference. A um, couple of new features like the indicator and wiper stocks are a little bit different. Wireless charging plate from driving the E3008, I felt there wasn't enough of an edge on that. If you went around a corner a bit too fast, your phone would go sliding off. TomTom Tom Nav comes as standard. You can set up the car for routes. It will tell you where you need to stop, how long for, where's the best version of road journeys for you to use. There's a lot of inbuilt technology. There's also a Burjo app that you can use to connect to the car, set up charging, climate control, all that stuff that you've seen happening more and more on modern cars. I think they've done a really good job at making the car a continuation of the last version. Haven't driven it yet, obviously. The car won't be officially launched till uh, later on in the year in terms of being able to order it. Probably see it on roads before the very end of this year. But something struck me today from one of the designers. They said, up till the last version of this car, an awful lot of seven-seaters were very practical, very functional, but they weren't exactly desirable. You didn't look back at them and go, do you know what, that's actually, it's great that it's a seven-seater, but it's actually standalone, good-looking car. And I think they've achieved that yet again with this. Perhaps some people would prefer the last version because again, it was just such a difference. It was a breath of fresh air. The car won so many awards, got Peugeot a lot of new customers that weren't typically buying their cars because now it had the seven-seater an option. Uh, so give me a seven-seater that still is desirable. That was their project and I think they have managed to achieve that with this car. I don't have a price for you. I can tell you it will be available in six different colors. Actually seeing it in a brighter color, I think it kind of works. I know Ireland and muck and rain doesn't really lend itself to white, but if you like washing your car, uh, it could be an option. I think it's gonna take the family, um, Couple of changes over the last version. For example, the front folding seat now doesn't fold. Peugeot have said they did that because people wanted an electric seat in the passenger seat rather than a foldable seat that they might use once or twice on a picnic. So, still a good family car. Now fully electric if you wish. Couple of range batteries, kind of ticking a lot of the boxes. The cars that this will funnily compete with, because there's not that many fully electric seven-seaters, are the Volvo EX90, which is a much more expensive but larger car, and the Kia EV9. It's also a little bit larger. This will have great 360 camera aids for parking it. If you're someone who's not comfortable with driving those larger cars, but you still need the bigger space that you'll get inside this car, this could be a reason why you'd want one of these over the other two, not to mention, even though I don't know the price yet, it's probably gonna be cheaper. Let me know your thoughts on the car. Would this be your second 5008? Because you've had one for the last few years. What do you think of the new design? Do you think they've managed to nail it pretty well? Uh, any comments or thoughts, please leave them down below. And thank you very much for watching.